Hey y'all, so in this episode of Dank Dishes by Dee, we're gonna be making a baked ziti, which is my mom's special recipe that she lended to me for the evening. And then for dessert, we're gonna be making a no-bake strawberry shortcake icebox cake. Um, so it's super easy, you just have to refrigerate it. So I'm gonna get started by mixing up this meat, and I have a pound of Italian sausage and a pound of ground beef. I'm actually not using ground beef, I'm using ground elk, which my dad shot, but if you're weird about that, you can totally just buy um, a pound of ground beef at the store. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get started by seasoning it. So I've got some Italian seasoning here, and you really just wanna put a lot of that in there because it's two pounds of meat. So probably about a tablespoon if you have a measure. And then probably about a tablespoon of salt too. And then some garlic powder, because it's a lot easier than chopping up garlic and worrying about it burning. For a recipe like this, garlic powder, and then just a little bit of pepper. And then I'm gonna mix this with my hands because if instead of just putting it both in the pan, at the same time and trying to work it together in the pan, if you mix it before, it makes it a lot easier to brown it all at the same time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try to mix these up. And then once they're ready, I'm gonna put them in the pan and get them browned. Okay, so I've got the meat all mixed up, and what I'm gonna do right now, I've got a nice extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna probably put about three or four tablespoons into a pan, turn that on like a medium heat, and then I'm gonna add my seasoned meat to it. And what you wanna do is you just wanna brown this and kind of get it cooked through. That way, when it goes in the oven, you don't have to worry about it cooking all the way through. You just have to warm everything. So if you brown this right now, um, that'll save cooking time in the oven. Okay, so I've mentioned this in a couple episodes, but just a reminder, I am gluten-free, and so that means I can't use regular penne pasta in this, which my mom has normally used. So I just want a gluten-free penne. You can order this online, you can find it at the store. This is Barilla brand, but Jovial brand is also delish, or if you're not gluten-free and really have no reason to eat like this, just buy normal penne pasta. So this is 12 ounces, and I'm doing a pound, so I'm gonna add a little bit of the second package. And I have some boiling water here. So I'm gonna do this and just a little bit of the second package. And this is made with rice. Um, oh, and I have to salt my water. Let's see, where do I put the salt? Okay, so I found my salt. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna add a good bit of salt because this is so much pasta. Um, it really helps keep the flavor going throughout the whole dish. And the thing with gluten-free pasta is it tends to stick a little bit. So right when you put it in, try to stir it so it just doesn't stick to the bottom. And it should be fine right after that. Just stir it, and this cooks for about 10 minutes, just like regular pasta, just follow the package instructions. And um, I'm just going to continue browning my meat and let that cook. Okay, so our pasta is al dente, which is what you want. It still means like it's a little bit firm, not super soggy, um, because it's going to go in the oven and cook with some tomato sauce. So you don't want it already soggy, because then it'll cook a little more in the oven. So what I'm going to do is grab my pot holders right here, and I'm going to drain this, and then I'm going to bring it back to the stove. Throw this pot back over here. And you don't want to ever rinse gluten-free pasta just because of the way it's made. Um, you can, I don't really think rinsing regular pasta is that good either. But especially if you're using gluten-free noodles for this, it's really important not to rinse. Just want to make sure it's drained a little bit. And then bring it back to the stove right here. And we are going to get started on adding all the rest of the stuff and then throwing it in the oven. I've got our hot pasta and you want to do this while it's hot so the cheese has a lot of time to melt. And I've got one and a half bags of just um, finely shredded mozzarella that you can get at the store. And I have the other half of the second bag saved for the topping. So I'm gonna add all this to the hot pasta. And then here I have a 15 ounce um, jar of ricotta. You're also gonna add this. And then this is a tribute to my dad. He, um, Parmesan cheese is his favorite cheese. He thinks of it as the king of cheeses. And I have to agree. And it's really important to buy like a nice Parmesan cheese because it's super aged and delicious. And um, if you can grate it yourself and you have the time, it's also really great. So I'm just gonna grate about a cup of this into here with a microplane grater. And I'll be here for a while, but it's definitely worth it. Okay, so I've got all my cheese in here and you just wanna give it a stir and kind of get this to start melting. And the pasta is still super hot, so it shouldn't take that much. All right, so I've got the cheese pretty much melted and I'm gonna add the tomato sauce now. 
So I have Rao's um, homemade vodka sauce. You don't need to use vodka. You can definitely use marinara. But I think the vodka um, and the Parmesan cheeses that are in this vodka sauce gives it like the extra oomph that you need. Um, and when you're buying um, pasta sauce, it's really easy to just buy like a store brand one. But I always try to buy one that has imported Italian tomatoes in the back on the ingredients. Just makes it really delicious. Um, so that is my criteria when buying pasta sauce. So I'm gonna add this whole jar. And then what I also like to do is I just got an extra jar of tomato sauce, like pureed tomatoes. I'm gonna add that too just so it's super um, evenly coated in sauce. I'm gonna mix all of this in. And then I'm gonna add the meat too. So I can add that actually right now. So I'm gonna add all of that. Hey y'all, so we have a guest star today. This is my roommate, Virginia, and she is gonna help me with the last steps of the baked ziti, and then she's also gonna help me with the dessert portion next. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab this, and Virg is gonna help me spoon this into our container. It's a super heavy pot, so this is, ooh, that looks so good. So we're just gonna spoon all of that into this container, and then we're gonna bake it in the same dish. So we're gonna top this with all the leftover mozzarella and then the Parmesan. We're gonna stick it in the oven for like 20 minutes at 350 just to warm it through. All right, so we've got our oven preheated to 350. We're just throwing our baked ziti in there. All the components are cooked through like I mentioned earlier, so you just kinda of wanna warm it through and melt the cheese like 20, 25 minutes. We're gonna get started on dessert next. We're making a um, gluten-free, no-bake, sugar cookie, strawberry shortcake cake. That was a lot of words, but you get the gist of it. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna make our own whipped cream. And the first step that you have to do for this is get either a metal or a glass bowl and put it in the freezer for at least 10 minutes. And this helps the whipped cream really um, take shape and um, make it delicious. So if you will, pour the entire thing of that into there. And I'm gonna get started on cutting the strawberries. You can really cut these any way you want. I kind of do it like this way. And you can just add like maybe like two capfuls of vanilla into that. The vanilla and then we're going to add some powdered sugar to it really gives it like a big depth of flavor and it's like addicting. We made some the other night and like we could not stop eating it. So it was in there. And then you can just start whipping that on like the highest speed. And then like once it starts forming, we'll add a quarter cup of powdered sugar. So exciting. Okay, so we're about halfway through the whipping of the cream process. And we're just gonna add a quarter cup of powdered sugar. This gives it like a little sweetness. The vanilla gives it like a nice depth of flavor. It's delish. So we're just adding that now. And then we're gonna get back to whipping the whipped cream. And it's kind of hard to tell when it's done, but it's gonna form soft peak. So what I like to do is like, I lift up the mixers and if the whipped cream rises up with it and kind of gives it like a little mini mountain, that's how to know it's done. So we'll show y'all when it's finished, kind of what it looks like. Okay, so we got our whipped cream all the way whipped. What we're gonna do now is kind of do like a building process of the strawberry shortcake. So V, if you'll just get like a little spoonful of that and spoon just like a little thin layer. Yeah, that's good. Maybe like a couple spoonfuls of that. Just like a little thin base layer so the cookies don't slide around in the bottom. Yeah, that's probably perfect. And then just spread it around. Really good in there. <laughs> oh yeah, that looks great. Yeah, so this is just kind of like a little cautionary layer so nothing slides around in the fridge. And then, um, so like I mentioned a million times now, I'm gluten-free, so I have these gluten-free sugar cookies. And they're actually really delicious, but if you want to just buy like a store-bought regular sugar cookie, Totally fine, but these are really great. They're the Enjoy Life Sugar Cookie brand. And um, so what we do is, normally when I make this, I do um, a bigger pan and do nine of them in the layer, but this is a littler pan, so I'm gonna grab a couple. I think we'll probably fit about like four-ish, three, and then if we break up one and like put in those little mini spots, oh yeah. That looks really good. Should I break this up again? Yeah. And then we'll grab like a third of our strawberries, just kind of sprinkle them around. So a strawberry shortcake is like the cake and then the whipped cream topped with strawberries, but 
Um, a lot of gluten-free pastries have like a weird texture, so having these cookies and letting it sit for like six hours makes the cookies really like mushy, not mushy, but like um, soft and really good. So we can just repeat that if you want to do the whipped cream. I'll get the cookies ready. And then once again, we'll just add the cookies. Kind of just like wedge as many as you can fit in a layer. Probably about five, and then you just sprinkle the strawberries. You should do like half of those. So this last one is like a little bit different because you want the top to look pretty, so you want it to be like whipped cream and then strawberries. So we're gonna do our last layer of whipped cream. So save, do like half of that, so save like half of it. So we'll do whipped cream cookie, whipped cream strawberry. That way it looks pretty on the top. Okay, so Verge finished the topping of the last layer of whipped cream, and we're just gonna add all the rest of the strawberries. Just so it looks pretty on top. So pretty. And then I cover this with saran wrap and put it in the fridge overnight, six hours, whatever you want. But I've already made one. So this is the bigger version of what I what I did. And then this one I used um, two pints of whipped cream, two pints of strawberries, and two packages of cookies. So do you want to serve this up? Yeah. Try it. So me and Verge can try a little serving of what we made. So we'll dig into this. You can see the layers in here. If you kind of get close, it's like all the different good layers of the cookies and the strawberries and whipped cream. And so we're gonna sample this while we wait for our baked ziti to finish and put this one in the Okay, so I think that our baked ziti's done. I just turned the oven off and let's see what it looks like. Oh, yum. So the cheese should be melted on top. The little corner should be a little bit brown. And this is definitely an optional step, but um, with like heavy pasta dishes, I like to have like a little herb or like something lighter like parsley. Since it's Italian, I'm gonna do a little bit of basil. So I'm just gonna chop this super fine between these big leaves here. And the way I chop basil is I roll it up like this. And then just do tiny little kind of ribbon cuts they look like. I'm just going to sprinkle this over the top. So it gives it like a nice pretty green element on the top. Plus it tastes really fresh. Um, so that's our big ziti. So tune in next week to Dang Dishes by D. Follow the Auburn Plainsman on Facebook, YouTube, all social media. And follow Dang Dishes by D. Bye.